Bonjour, je suis Rickson Grace. Bienvenue to Public Domain. Hello, my friend. Good, thank you. I'm, you know, I'm doing well. Even though this year was a very complicated year, I try to focus myself on 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 favor the my classes online and try to favor my ideas towards a, a more peaceful jiu-jitsu in order to cope with the situation. The idea for this book was just bring my life, which is very, very stream life, you know, from the point I start to become, uh, you know, a member and representing the Gracie family and the challenges I pass through are very strong, are very stream. And I feel like some good information can be taken from that in order for you to become a better person. So my history can inspire people to become better. So I feel like it's relevant to tell. Yes, I have one which I have to live without making, it was fighting Sakuraba in the time he was just beating other Gracie, members of the Gracie family. And uh, I felt like it was the perfect match for me to just you know, settle things. But uh, just after the best opportunity to fight Sakuraba in 2000, uh, my son passed away and I have to postpone all the strategic, strategic aspects of fighting, being professional. So it's never happened. And after that, time just go by and Sakuraba starts going in a, in a losing straight. So he becomes not as important as he was. And somehow we never happened. So I felt like this is a fight I should do. I, I like to, I was like to do in my time, but it didn't happen and I have to live with that. Without a doubt, my first professional Valitudo match was the worst for sure. Because I didn't have too much experience, only 19 years old, fighting a guy who is 50 pounds, like 25 kilos heavier than me, and uh, older man, like 30 years old or something. So he was a, in a good position as a professional, and I was just a beginner. And in the middle of the fight, I mean, and the first round ends, I felt like I did not have the, the stamina to keep going. I tried to convince my father I was heavy enough and I want to quit. And my father didn't listen to me, he started to say, oh man, you go, he's worse than you, you keep going and you go kick his ass. And, uh, and I was doubt about that and I asked you, my dad, I'm very tired, I don't want to go. And then my brother Hall's throw me a bucket of ice and water in my head, <sighs> was a deep breath and then the bell rings and I went back to the fight. And I end up winning my fight, like my dad said, very quickly, three minutes after in the second round. I could put him to sleep. So it was a confirmation. My worst enemy at this point was my, my own mind playing tricks on me. So I felt like I could not live with that kind of pressure from inside, from within. So I decided to not be more responsive to what my mind say at this point if I have troubles again. And I decided to prefer to die than quit. So after I make this change in my mind, I never have more enemies in my brain. I always go for a mission. I go for a victory. I go for representing the family. But the possibility to get killed, the possibility to sacrifice myself in my way, in my mission, becomes part natural of my endeavor. So I felt comfortable to keep going from that on with a good experience, which make me feel like stronger than ever because my mind, my body, my spirit, they all work together for, for accomplish the goal. 
So from that point on, no more enemies in my mind. That's a, that's a very, very interesting observation, which I never noticed and I never thought about that. And uh, I know for a fact people are being respectful when you call by the last name. So, Conde Coma, Conde Maeda Coma, was the way I, I know he's being called. I don't, Hideo maybe is the first name, so it's not exactly too important in the Japanese culture. So, maybe it's that, but I don't know. Oh, I mean, my life is towards jiu-jitsu and practice from six years old competing and, and, and always being involved, seeing my brothers leading the, 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 the path for me and following the, 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 the pattern to be a Gracie representative. And I felt like when I get the black belt, I become in charge of my own responsibilities and my own mission. And that was a very important moment for me. With 18 years old, I was already get my black belt, and uh, from that point on, I become fully representative of the, the, the clan. And uh, I think that was the moment where I felt like I was embracing, I was full graduated to embrace my mission and, and follow through with all commitment, 100% commitment. Oh, without a, without a doubt, the growing process of jiu-jitsu is tremendous. You know, we see tournaments everywhere, we see people training and practice all over the globe. And uh, jiu-jitsu become established as a good effective art to support any striker or grappler. So no matter if it's MMA, no matter if it's a grappling submission sport, jiu-jitsu is a very strong part of it. But with this being said, the competitive aspect of the, 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 moda, the modernity of the events, in my opinion, make feels like more sportive than martial arts. And that's diminish the value of the information within the sport. Because if you practice the sport with weight division, with rules, with time limits and so on, you become an athlete under some circumstances but completely unaware of surprises and unpredictable situations could happen with you. And I feel like martial arts have to keep you, keep supporting you, no matter if you go for an event, no matter if you're fighting on the street, or no matter if you have problems on your email. You have to have tools in the martial arts arsenal to be spiritual, to be mental, to be emotional in control, and to be strategically and technically correct. So, in order for you to, to take advantage of the full spectrum of Jiu-Jitsu, you have to understand Jiu-Jitsu as a self-defense, as a, as, a, as a situation where you can deal with the unpredictable. Because that will enforce your ways to become a better person, a stronger person, not just into the, on the mat, but outside of the mat. Jiu-Jitsu is an art for you to, is a martial arts for you to start to become comfortable in discomfortable situations. And not only based on physicality or brutality or aggressiveness or, or talent, but based on techniques, based on leverage, based on angles, you can put yourself always deflecting the opponent's energy and becomes capable to counter, counter and, and surprise the opponent. So, gives a chance for the weak one to excel in a confrontation, no matter if you're fighting, no matter if you're dealing business, no matter if you do relationships, Jiu-Jitsu is going to be always a good support for to keep your emotions, spiritual and physical, at your best. The Jiu-Jitsu Global Federation is a federation I created Intent, with the intention to restore the, the position of Jiu-Jitsu towards martial arts. So we really definitely encourage, 
enforce people in the self-defense aspect, but also we're going to create scenarios for women's empowerment, law enforcement, kids' classes, and also color belts and rankings, how to test, how to, what needs, what techniques are required for each belt, and what kind of training in preparation for belt pro, uh, promotions. So with all this organized, we will be able to, to reinvent Jiu-Jitsu or to, to restore Jiu-Jitsu in the position he belongs. Because right now I feel like too many athletes, too many tough guys competing, but the essence of the invisible power of element of Jiu-Jitsu is, is not present anymore. So I like to bring this back to our community. Uh, definitely, the, the MMA today becomes huge and becomes a very interesting entertainment sport, which has violence, aggressiveness, abilities, physicality. Everything is very exciting and, 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 and entertainment. But I don't feel like the spirit of the martial arts is still there. It's more like a sport with rules and, you know, but for example, in a three rounds fight, if you win the two rounds, even if you get caught in the final round and a choke and you save by the bell, you still win in the fight because the previous two rounds you won. So that's not martial arts. In martial arts, you make one mistake, you pay for it. So it doesn't make sense in a fight when you say the guy is going to be always dead, he's saved by the bell and he's still winning the fight. So that's pretty much rules and engagements which are not exactly the definition of martial arts. Another aspect is, is everything is in the same way division. So if, if it's different sizes, the, the fight is supposed to be go on and giving the credit for the weak one because he can resist or can do so. The elements of fighting are a little too much sportive, too much in a box, which takes the martial arts aspect of it. So I feel like uh, it's very entertaining, but it's still just a game. I feel like Jiu-Jitsu has been, has been used in different ways. And in particular, in the last 25, 30 years, Jiu-Jitsu has been evolving towards competition and towards supporting the fighters on the MMA scenario, which is still very effective in terms of body mechanics and abilities to fight. But because the, 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 set, the set rules, because the, 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 the whole idea of elaborating the event takes away from the martial arts scenario, which is more unpredictable, is more emotional, is more... You need to recruit more tools in your arsenal to deal with. So, it's tough, but in the same way, it's kind of easy, the, the approach for the sport of MMA. So, Jiu-Jitsu has to be restored in terms of bringing more self-defense, bringing more concepts of how to deal life through jiu-jitsu, not exactly how to fight an opponent through jiu-jitsu. Because I feel like the, the modernity demands for the spiritual warrior win a fight, but without a fight. So you have to win without a fight, instead beat somebody to win. Violence is not in demand, so we need to understand our capacity to use our invisible force to be more peaceful, to be more happy, to deal with situations which are really relevant. Because happiness is a movement force. And everything, if you're happy today because you buy a car or you have a job, or in 10 years from now, the happiness has to be in a different stage. So in order for you to, to, to get happy and check what you need and get happy again and happy and happy, you have to, to use the martial arts tools like strategy, focus, hope, faith, and uh, visualization. All those elements has to be used in a broad way for you to take martial arts and put into your life 
in order to win your challenge to make you happy. So if you're just an athlete, you don't have those tools. But if you're a martial artist, you're able to translate, to, to transfer the, the, the situations you have on the mat or on the fighting scenario to life in a very common and easy path. Because it's the same situations, you know. Sometimes your enemy in today's, in the modern times, is more like can be an email. And that email can really disturb you, make you stress. So in order to cope with that, you know how to, you have to learn how to breathe properly, how to visualization, how to accept spiritually the problems and, and make yourself comfortable. So it's a lot into martial arts can be used in life when you have the open mind to, to learn all the aspects, all the realistic aspects of being comfortable in hell. Uh, I feel like I live in a different era, you know, and my grandsons, they have been loved a lot by their parents. They have been oriented, they've been practicing jiu-jitsu, they've been doing whatever they do. But I feel like I have no, no I'm not compromised to, to keep them in jiu-jitsu. I'm not compromised to make them feel like they have to be teachers or fighters or representatives of the art. Because today the art spreads so much and I like to leave the art for the ones who are passionate about. So they're going to be exposed to that. They're going to be exposed to my history and my life and my passions. And I hope for them the best God can give to them, regardless what they're going to be in life. My perspective of life is of course, is, is follow through this, the ideas and the mindsets of my uncle, my father, you know. I, I could not be what I am. My existence has no meaning if I don't come in from, the, from them. But even though I, I get my own philosophy based on what I learn, they're very different. My, my uncle Carlos is a very spiritual guy, very much... Uh, knowledgeable and like sciences and like uh, uh, arts like mandalas and biorhythm and things like sciences and nutrition. He, he really be, be become the, the, the mentor for the clan in terms of keeping the we are we all unified and keeping the family with a purpose. My father captured that message and started to become the general the more like the, the active fighter teaching the family and keeping the family under the, the practice and the, and the military aspect of a warfare. So making all dedicated to the practice, eating well, thinking good, positive things. So they have different roles. I absorb both of roles. And now my goal is because I become comfortable and become a champion and fighting and experience. And now my, my real goal transcends my effectiveness as a fighter and becomes more like a, a mission to promote a better spread out of the art, making the, making the art more accessible for people who are not even like to fight. One of the big mistakes we have today in our jiu-jitsu community is for every average academy in jiu-jitsu, for every 10 new students who come in, eight will live in less than six months because the training is too hard, because they don't have the time to enjoy the, the practice in terms of empowerment, and they already throw, to the, throw themselves to the lions and start to, to train very hard. And sometimes they get injury, sometimes they get stress, uh, claustrophobic, and they don't, have to, they don't know how to, to, to heal that process and they quit. So my idea now is to create an environment for jiu-jitsu which gives practice to the practitioners without giving them too much stress in the beginning. So, in other words, for the first year, you're going to learn everything about jiu-jitsu, throws, escapes, moves, submissions. But instead of having an opponent in front of you who tries to challenge every class, you have to have a training partner who just allowed you to practice and you start to develop techniques and angles. 
So you're able to, to learn, you're able to be in a good environment, get fit, lost weight, but not put yourself disappointed with your competition skills or get hurt with some brutal young guy who just don't care and hurt you. So the idea of progressing in Jiu-Jitsu those days demands a little more technical, more empowerment, breathing, thinking, strategies, and make you feel like you get in a mood of bringing Jiu-Jitsu to your life to become a better father, a better police officer, a better employee, a better secretary, a better employer, and become much more happy because you can feel an invisible power to support you. <laughs> I will be afraid to change anything because in the middle of the turmoil I live my life and the intensity my life was in Rio de Janeiro and things like that, I feel like I was lucky enough and I, gonna, I cannot be more luckier than I was putting myself in situations I put and get the, 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 the situation with a good end the way I, I, I see it. So even though I make mistakes through my life, I feel like I, I own this, those mistakes, my, my success. So I grow from my mistakes, I learn from it. And it's a very important thing is when you have a, a good mission in your brain, when you're passionate about what you do, your legacy, your family, your, so you can make mistakes, but immediately next day, instead you do another mistake, you say, wow, yesterday was a bad day. Today I go back to eat well, training well. So all my mistakes are just being a, a leverage for me to become a stronger Gracie, a stronger in my mission of serve and compete and represent. Yeah, about the movie, it's still going. We just close a, a, a new deal with Netflix in terms of was a two movie. I mean, was a one movie about me and Maeda. Now they decide to split the movies. They make one movie about me, the other movie about the Conde Coma. So that's the newest situation of the, the whole thing. And it's still just, it's still in scratch to start to film in October. I'm not sure if it's gonna happen or not, I hope so. And I'm looking forward to see myself on the big screen. <laughs> I'm very happy to have new motivations in life. I feel like if you don't find yourself with a projection, with an idea of accomplishment, you're basically dead and you don't know yet. So you have to have goals. And my goal before was just fighting for, uh, training for more efe efficiency, to bring in Jiu-Jitsu to a more perfect way to win, to defeat, to whatever. Now my purpose is to enhance the base of the triangle, giving the opportunity for people who are not fighters, learn the skills of and what I have in my mind to become more understandable about handle pressure, being strong, be, believe in your self-defense, your capacity to protect yourself and be able to connect with people better because Jiu-Jitsu has this special element of humanizing people. And especially in this world which technology, robotics, internet take you from being human and become just an image or a, or a social media presence or looking our best look. Jiu-Jitsu give you the chance to experiment the other human body and breathe together and breathe and, and, and act and move and respond and look in the eye and shake hands and approach. So make better for you to get a job, make better for you to get a girlfriend, make better for you to, to, to strategize a business, handle pressure. So Jiu-Jitsu has so many qualities overall which can, can help somebody. I feel like my biggest motivation now is to offer jiu-jitsu to, to people who don't think they can be a fighters and they will be amazed and surprised 
how much empowerment and how much beneficial aspect jiu-jitsu can bring for their own lives. I feel like it's an endless motion of development. Jiu-jitsu is, you can invent new moves, you can, so it never stops in terms of effectiveness and, and, and but I feel like my invention now is to create easy ways to make people who are not exactly fighters, find easy ways for them to get passionate about jiu-jitsu and completely addicted to the practice. In relation to seminars, uh, that's something I like to diminish in my life, especially with this unpredictable future. I'm not sure. I don't want to make my life going back and forth to everywhere. But eventually I will do seminars, yes. But my focus now is to give instruction through the, my site, Hickson.academy. If you want to get good in the fundamentals, if you want to get really uh, get understand not only my techniques but also my brain. You go to Hickson Dot Academy, which will be the platform we have to connect with each other. And uh, I still present. I will be able to vi make virtual visits to you. I will be able to answer your questions. I will be able to teach you some invisible techniques and also visible ones. So I'm looking forward to see you guys at the Hickson Dot Academy. Oh, this fight is like, is a, is a must to be seen. Nobody see it yet. And I still have in a small tape, I have to, to digitalize. And for sure, I'm gonna show for everybody, yes. Merci, Frederic. See you soon, my brother. Merci beaucoup, mon ami. Bye-bye. Ça va.